this video is all about how we started writing a song to somehow improve, the purists are gonna hate me for saying that, improve the importance of being earnest. <laughs> So I'm a big fan of the play The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, and I've seen it dozens of times, and I've directed it twice. But by today's standards, it's a little bit of a wonky show because it has three different acts, all of which have different settings. This means that it's a little tricky to know where to put intermission, but traditionally, intermission usually goes between acts two and three. The Importance of Being Earnest is a really funny show. But the trouble is, most of the comedy happens in Act 2. So then when you come back to Act 3, that can seem a little bit anticlimactic. If your audience is just coming back from a break, Act 3 might seem a little bit like a dull reopening of the curtain. That's not what directors want. <laughs> so, the last time I directed The Importance of Being Earnest, my dramaturg and student, Marin Thompson, suggested to me, why don't we write a song that opens up Act 3. So we went with that idea, and we wrote a song. And so this video is all about how we started that and how we got into writing a song to somehow improve, the purists are gonna hate me for saying that, improve the importance of being earnest. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the importance of being earnest is great. <laughs> we just wanted to make Act 3 just a little bit better. Just a little bit better. And the play is over a hundred years old, so we could get away with it. <laughs> Public domain, baby. So, The Importance of Being Earnest takes place in the Victorian era, and I was very much directing it as if it were taking place in the Victorian era. I wasn't making it like a 1960s or 1970s period jump. I was keeping it Victorian. So it was very important to me to make the song feel Victorian. I have never written a song that sounds Victorian, I guess, uh, so this was a challenge. It was time to do some research. What does a Victorian era song sound like? <laughs> some of the stuff that I found was that Victorian, Victorian era songs were very melodic. They had titles like, I'm gonna read a few here, uh, Come Sweet Marguerite, Good Night, Good Night Beloved, Phyllis is My Only Joy. Many Victorian songs also made use of little uh, melodic made-up words. They were sort of carryovers from English madrigal singing. Things like fa la 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 or hey nani nani, nani nani no, or dilly dilly down, dilly dilly down, dilly dilly down down, I don't know. Also, uh, the music of Gilbert and Sullivan was huge, so if you know any melodies from Gilbert and Sullivan, like I'm called Little Buttercup, sweet Little Buttercup, though I will never know why. But blah blah call buttercup, sweet little buttercup, blah 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 buttercup I or I am the very model of a modern major general life information vegetable animal and mineral ba 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 So I really loved the idea of those hey nani nani dilly dilly down kinds of lyrics, so I was gonna use those. And you know that song, Come On Eileen, by Dexie's Midnight Runners? Come on, Eileen. <laughs> that was horrible. To ra, to ra, to lu ra, to ra. I love that. So we were going to make use of that. So I found out that parlor instruments were really popular in the Victorian era. Things like parlor guitars, uh, even parlor banjos. So I thought the idea of parlor instruments was really right on with kind of what I wanted my concept for this song to be. Ukuleles were not used very much in the Victorian era, but they just, today, really do give off a parlor instrument vibe. So I thought, you know what, if we make this a ukulele song, even better. And it just so happens that I had two actors who were both guitarists and who could both pick up ukulele really quickly. So the actors that I had to play these two roles were Andrew Schuler, who played Jack, and Hans Bladel, who happens to be my son, who played Algernon. And it just so happened that the actor who played Jack, Andrew Schuler, uh, also wanted to write down some lyrics for what he thought the song would be. And so I was able to use about 50% of those. 
Uh, and so let's just quick take a look at some footage of me uh, trying to work out the song because I was actually doing it in front of the computer. So here's a little bit of footage. So as you listen to this, you can hear that this is not the melody that I ended up with. But it was a starting place. I will often do this in front of the computer just so that I don't forget uh, musical ideas that I have. But <laughs> looking back at this, you can see and you can hear that it is visually uninteresting and it is painful to listen to. <laughs> So I knew it was going to be a melodic song. I knew I wanted to employ some of those Hey Nani Nani, Tulu Raye non-words. Uh, <laughs> and I wanted it to be a ukulele song. With that, I got busy on, on trying to figure out what the song was going to be. I actually love videos like this because you can really see how rough it is at the very beginning. Uh, and then I started to refine the melody a little bit more, uh, which sounds a little bit more like this. My dearest Cecily, I love you. My heart must be a sway. And at think this point, together, I'm able to start employing some of the lyrics that Andrew had written down. And so I've, I've got a melody, and I've fooling around with some of the lyrics that Andrew has, and we're starting to get something that sounds like what the song will actually be. And then both go, hey, Debbie, down, Nani, no. Hey, Debbie, down, Nani, no. Tallu, Rai, hey. And finally, after a lot of trial and error and a lot of practice, all the pieces for the song are really now in place. Uh, notice that while I'm videoing this, my head is not in the shot. That's because. This was really a reference for me. I wanted to make sure that I had the camera on the ukulele so that if I ever looked back at this, I could see what I was playing. Uh, so <laughs> kind of an awkward video with me just sort of cut off at the eyeballs. But uh, again, this is uh, more for me and I never knew I was going to be making a video out of this in the first place. We are engaged, it says so in your diary. Too bad your engagement is a made up story. Try to forget about my name. So once I had what I thought was the, a pretty good melody, uh, and I sort of knew who was going to be singing what, I typed it all out, uh, and I made a lyric sheet and a chords sheet. I just sort of put down how I was playing the ukulele chords. Uh, at any rate, there came a time where they were seeing the song for the first time, uh, and and they learned it pretty quick. Uh, and so here's a little bit of footage of them uh, working out the song on stage for the first time. So to be fair, this is not the first time that they had run the song, but it is the first evening. So after practicing it about 10 times, we decided to record and this is what we got. This was exciting for me because I got to hear what the song sounded like with harmony for the first time. And I really commend Andrew and Hans for learning this song so quickly, but not only that, but being really excited about it and giving it their all, which always helps in a rehearsal situation. We are engaged, it says so in your diary. Too bad your engagement was a made up story. Okay, so for you to be able to understand really what the lyrics of the song are talking about. If you were there at the play and you saw Acts 1 and 2, you would understand everything. But for you who are viewing at home, you might not be familiar with the importance of being earnest, so I'm just going to give you a quick uh, a summary of what you need to know, a little bit of backstory for you to understand the lyrics of the song. So, this is Jack. He uses the fake name of Ernest when he wants to act irresponsibly. That way none of his important friends will know. It also just so happens that he doesn't know the origin of his own birth. Because as a baby, he was found in a handbag in Victoria Station. Jack is the guardian of Cecily. 
Cecily only knows Ernest as Jack's absent black sheep younger brother, but she falls in love with the idea of Ernest. Jack is in love with Gwendolyn, who only really loves him because his name is Ernest. She just loves the name Ernest. And remember, his name isn't really Ernest, it's Jack. This is Algernon. When he finds out that his friend Jack has an excessively pretty young ward named Cecily, he sneakily goes to the country to meet her, posing as Jack's black sheep brother, Ernest. He quickly learns that Cecily has been dreaming of marrying Ernest, and in her mind they are already engaged. She has even written about it in her diary. The two fall quickly in love. However, Cecily reveals that it has always been a girlish dream of hers to fall in love with someone named Ernest. So, both Gwendolyn and Cecily want to be in love with someone named Ernest, and both Algernon and Jack are lying, pretending that their names are Ernest when they are not. So, right before intermission, the deception of these two gentlemen is revealed to both of the ladies. It's hilarious. And now the men need to make amends with their loves, which sets us up for the song at the beginning of Act 3. Let us maintain a dignified silence. Certainly, it is the only thing to do now. If you enjoyed that and you're interested in watching that production in its entirety, I will leave a link to the BLC production down in the description. Uh, otherwise, you guys, uh, this is It's a Creative Life, and on this channel, we try to do creative content every week. And if you like this stuff, why don't you consider subscribing? Until next time, you guys, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.